Let's hold down Control Shift. And we've talked about the curve brushes. So we talked about trim curve, slice curve, and clip curve. Let's talk about some of these other ones. Now you may have already guessed because we've already talked about this functionality before. If we go over here to clip circle, uh, it went and changed that stroke instead of clip curve, which is the curve stroke. Again, if you go into stroke here, here's rectangle, circle, and lasso. And of course, if you go in here, you're gonna see we have clip, rectangle, circle. We don't have a clip lasso, but you can switch that stroke out if you'd like. Same thing for slice, circle, rectangle, trim, circle, rectangle, and trim does actually have a lasso brush in here. But if you want quick access, hold down control shift, we'll go here and clip circle. And if you hold down control shift and you want to clip through an object, you've guessed it, uh, it's going to clip your object into a circle. Now, there is a little bit more functionality here we need to talk about. And you may have noticed when you drag this out, there's a little plus sign in there. So if you hold down control shift, and you clip, it's going, to, it's going to basically clip everything to that border of the circle, and it works as intended, and that happens no matter where that circle is. However, if you hold down Alt, you're going to see it turns black, and then if you let go, it's going to clip out a circle shape. However, if you hold down Control shift and then Alt, and that plus sign goes inside of your mesh, now it's going to take your mesh and go out to that circle shape that you had. Now, there's not a whole lot of geometry here to support that. If you want, again, we can go down here to DynaMesh, turn down Blur, give ourselves a little bit more Geo. So now when you hold down Control shift and then Alt with the plus sign over into the mesh, now it'll clip out and you'll get a little circle shape. So this is really useful. You Control drag again, you can get like a little inset screw port in here. You can go into your clay brush and hold down Alt. And uh, let's go ahead and turn off Sculptors Pro here. So you can go through here and kind of put in a quick little screw port. Let me smooth this off. So that's one way you could use that. Let's go ahead and scroll back until we're just to our sphere again. Uh, if we have X symmetry turned on, let's go around back around to the front again. We hold down Control Shift and Alt. You're going to see again the clip brushes do go across X symmetry. The slice and trim don't, but clip brushes should work across symmetry. Now you can also use clipping to clean up areas too. Uh, it won't put a hole in the mesh though. But if you have a hole in your mesh, it'll clean it up. Like if I want to go, like I want to cut a circle through here, uh, you can't really do that. You can go through here and you can say, okay, let's slice a circle through my object. Control shift, tap this, go down here to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. But if you run a close holes, you're going to see it's just going to cap those two points, which makes sense. You know, any, any machine looking at this is going to go, that's probably what they want is to cap these, not bridge these two holes. Now there are DynaMesh Booleans, there are Boolean meshes we can use to put holes in meshes. There's a lot of different ways to accomplish this. One easy way I'm going to do it though is I'm going to come up here just for demonstration purposes not to get too far ahead. We're going to grab a Cylinder 3D and before we turn it to a Poly Mesh, go down here to Initialize. We're going to take this and we're going to put in a little bit of an inner radius. So we're going to put an inner radius in this mesh right here so we have a hole through it. And then we're going to go all the way back up here at the top, make it a Poly Mesh 3D. Then you know what? Let's go ahead and come down here to DynaMesh, turn off Blur, and then just make this a DynaMesh mesh. So like we were doing before, if we hold down Control Shift and we use Clip Circle, we can go through here and we can clip a little chunk out as long as we have the plus sign outside of the mesh, we can hold down Alt, and we can have X symmetry on, or even underneath Transform, we can turn on X and Y symmetry, or in this case, if we orient ourselves in space correctly, we're gonna see the cylinder is actually facing upwards. So what we need to do in this case is say X and Z symmetry, and now when we're looking this way, we can go through here and we can take a chunk out of all these, or you can turn on radial symmetry if you want. And of course, if you hold down Control Shift and Alt, you can pull shapes out, and you can Control Drag to redyna mesh. And for this middle circle in here, we hold down Control Shift and drag out a circle. We can actually clean up this hole or we can make it bigger. We can go through here and be like, you know what, I want the hole to be that big. However, if you just clip it and you don't hold down Alt, it's going to take all that geometry and push it towards that. And if that's what you're looking for, then that's uh, totally fine. However, because we can now make a circle and hold down Alt and the cross isn't over any geometry, it will go ahead and just clip a nice clean circle through there. Of course, like we talked about earlier, we can go to Clip Circle Center, make sure square and centers on so we can go right down the middle make a perfect circle here and just remember to hold down alt and there you go let's go ahead and turn off our floor here and let's go up here to control shift so we've talked about the 
clip and slice and trim curve options. We've talked about the rectangular and circular clipping. You can also do the exact same thing with slice and trim. So if we go over here to like slice circle, we can hold down control shift and we can slice a circle here. And remember, even though I have axis symmetry on in two directions now, it's only going to do it in one area. So if you want to have this propagate out, you need to do a mirror and weld in the X and Z. And you may have to go down here to mirror in the X first and then mirror and weld in the X and Z. And that'll copy that slice for you. Now another cool functionality, we talked about this earlier. Let's go ahead and uh, tap X to go out of X symmetry, or to go out of symmetry altogether, activating symmetry. Let's go uh, Control Shift and we'll pull out another circle here and we'll just drop a circle right here. Now if you remember when we were talking about the stroke menu up here underneath modifiers, there is a replay last relative. So we know we can hit Shift 1 and that'll go ahead and just rerun that clip functionality right where our brush is. All right, there's a little bit of extra functionality with these clip curves, as well as some pitfalls that we've already kind of talked about. We'll, we'll go ahead and talk about some workarounds that you can have, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So I'm going to go out of edit mode, say always switch, hit control N. And again, we'll just grab a sphere 3D out of our canvas or out of our palette here, drag it out on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. Now, if I hold down control shift and we choose clip curve, and we hold down control shift and then drag a line over our mesh, that's again gonna pull these points straight back to that gradient. However, if I hold down control shift and then hold down space bar, you're gonna see I have extra options in here, B radius, polygroup, and unclip. If you wanna see these, uh, if you go down here to brush, clip brush modifiers, that's where that menu is. But a quick way to access that again is control shift and then hold down the space bar and you'll see this. So if we undo that last stroke and then hold down control shift space bar and do B radius, that's brush radius. And you see if we do this, it's gonna clip, but there's gonna be a radius around this edge. So if you see that inside circle, essentially our focal shift is gonna dictate that radius that we clip through. So if you wanna get kind of a nice layered effect with the clip brush, uh, B radius is how you would do that. You can also tap S, uh, drop that draw size down or draw your, make your draw size smaller up here. And then again, hold down control shift and that'll give you that brush radius effect. Let's go ahead and undo that. If we hold down control shift, let's turn off B radius and we'll turn on polygroup. You can do both at once, but we'll just use polygroup for now. Uh, now if I do this and I hold down control shift and clip, you're gonna see it leaves a polygroup behind. So polygroups are super useful when you want to go through here and we'll skip ahead a little bit, say geometry, edge loop, say panel loops and stuff. We'll go ahead and crank that thickness up. So you can see you can use polygroups to dictate different panel lines and stuff like that. We'll do control shift A. You can see you can start splitting things off like that using polygroups. However, you're going to notice this polygroup isn't that clean. It's, it's actually kind of uh, alias and it's all dependent on the underlying geometry because again, the clip brush isn't slicing, it isn't giving you a clean cut, it's just pushing that geometry back and then giving you a polygroup essentially where that line was. If you want a cleaner version, hold down control shift and again, go over here to trim curve. That'll give you a nice clean slice as well as a fill hole operation. So this will give you a much cleaner result. If we go over here to panel loops now, you're gonna see that result is much cleaner. Control shift tap that polygroup here and then you do control shift A for visibility grow all and you'll see you get a much cleaner result. And then again with the trim curve brush, if you go down here and you hold down control shift and space bar, uh, if you have polygroup turned on, it already makes a polygroup, so it's probably not doing anything out of the ordinary here. However, if we undo that, hold down control shift, let's turn on B radius and then turn off polygroup. You're gonna see when you use the trim with B radius, it's actually going to trim based on that, again, that inner focal shift uh, width. So you're going to see it trims both the front and the back side. That's a really easy way to kind of go through here and just get a slice all the way through your object. If we hold down control shift and go over here to slice curve and again we have B radius still turned on. You can go through here and now you're going to get a thickness of your slice through here. So you can continue to go through here and hold down control shift and just slice through here. So this is useful if you want to make strips of geometry the exact same width, because otherwise if you didn't have a B radius, what you'd have to do is hold down control shift and you would have to kind of eyeball it. So it's like, okay, I want it to be a slice this thick and then I want to do another slice that's that thick here and it could take you a while and it won't be the exact same. However, control Z, 
if you have B radius on, it's very easy to go through here and slice through. Now you can also use visibility. So if I hold down control shift and isolate this polygroup and then go back this way, you're gonna see, and then hold down control shift to bring everything back, it stops right where that visibility is. So this is an, a useful way for you to go through and hide specific pieces in here. And then you can hold down control shift, go back to select rectangle, and you can control shift tap, control shift drag to invert that, and then you can get rid of all these pieces in the middle here. And now you have like a scaffolding uh, effect here. Control shift tap to bring everything else back. Now you're gonna see when I have select rectangle selected and I can control shift tap here, it's a lot easier to kind of go through and select polygroups. Another thing too is if you hold down control shift and say you have slice or trim or clip selected and you're going through here and you're clipping and we still have uh, brush radius turned off with clip brush so we can turn that off so we're going through here and we're clipping and then if i hold down control shift and start dragging out a line and i'm like oh you know what i want to switch to visibility really quick let go of your keyboard and then tap control once and that'll switch back to visibility even though we have clip curve still selected it'll switch temporarily to a clip or a visibility drag and in fact you can now hold down alt and you can get rid of polygons here so that's just a really easy way to kind of switch from whatever your modifier brush is be it clip trim or slice you can temporarily tap control to go back to visibility and you can tap control again to go back to clipping so we'll control shift tap out here in our document to go back and if we go back here let's go back to say slice circle and then hold down control shift hold down your space bar, go to brush radius. This still works. Even if you're using like slice circle, it'll still do a brush radius around your circle. So let's take that history undo slider all the way back. So you can see if you hold down control shift and then do a slice circle, you'll get a brush radius around that. So we can make our brush radius smaller. We can use slice. And then remember you can do shift one to repeat underneath our stroke menu modifiers, replay last relative. So you can very quickly go through here and just do a brush radius slice.